for being a show about The Witcher, we have spent a lot of time with Yennefer these first three seasons. Or first three episodes. Well, actually, the, the last two. Episode two and episode three. But yeah, way too much of her backstory. I'm assuming she is going to be a very important part to this series. The main characters seem to be Yennefer, The Witcher, and Ciri. And we didn't have a lot of Siri at all in this episode. The only time we had her was for a few minutes towards the end, which is setting up uh, episode four. So anyways, welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today we're reviewing episode three of The Witcher. And I thought it was an okay episode. I mean, there was a, an abortion in this in this episode we saw a sex scene with people clapping you know clapping them on like the olden days i guess even though i think it was an illusion or magic or just to spice up their sex life with yennefer and i can't remember the character's name that she was having sex with and we had a little bit of nip tuck you know, body, she, you know, Yennefer was like a hunchback. And in this episode, at the end, she levels up, or as the kids say now, she glowed up. And she looks stunning and is using her sexuality and her brand new looks, I guess, to gain favor with the king. And we'll see how that develops going forward. And then the Witcher. So I know that Henry Cavill is doing his best portrayal of the Witcher. Gerard, I think his name is. I can't remember. I think I'm saying it correctly, Gerard. But his story seems like it's just every episode is, is like a quest. And I think in my last review for episode two, if you remember again, the Hercules with Kevin Sorbo, the series, that's what it was basically is every episode it was a brand new adventure uh, i haven't seen a lot of correlation or a lot of cohesiveness with his character and i enjoy his portrayal but it's very robotic again i'm not familiar with the video game that's the only example i think that cavill will have in how to to act as the witcher but it's very huh hey how do you do it I don't know what to go. Uh, uh. A lot of growling, a lot of uh, uh. And this and this episode had a lot more sex. I think in again in my episode two review, I said that I could definitely see why people were saying that this uh, this show tries to be very Game of Thrones. And uh, yeah, the boobs were out in this episode they should call this i should call this the boob episode because there was a lot of breast and you know of course you know uh, henry cavill with he was shirtless for i think a couple scenes but it was a lot of eye candy for us gentlemen in this episode which i don't mind but this is the direction they took and like i said with game of Thrones, it does fit in this in the way they they did it is not it wasn't gratuitous even though it was fairly often for this hour episode they did show it a lot but again they did it where it goes along with the story it goes along with the times they're not just doing it to get the guys in there and be like oh look boobs oh <laughs> you know so they did it very tastefully even though it was out there and Again, no one, no, at least there's guys and girls that will not complain about that. I can't, even though it was all covered up in, in smelly sweat or mud or blood or what have you in this episode. Uh, yeah, you could definitely feel that Game of Thrones-ish vibe that this show was throwing. As far as what the hell is going on and how these three stories um, intertwine, I have no fucking clue. Again, I haven't read the books, I haven't played the game, and I am as confused as 
I was when I first started seeing this to episode three now. Now, the only one that has an arc that I could follow is Jennifer. Again, for a show that's being called The Witcher, it should be called The, the Witch because we're focusing a lot, at least in the last two episodes, on Yennefer and her transformation from a hunchback that no one wants, that everyone bullies, that everyone makes fun of, to right now she is just a gorgeous, stunning magi now, or, you know, magician or whatever, or witch that she is, that is about to take revenge on all of those that underestimated her. It was enjoyable, at least from, from the first, I thought the first one was probably the most enjoyable just because it kind of, it was a lot more action. The dialogue was a lot more crisp. But in this one, as far as like an overall episode, it was enjoyable. It was probably the second out of the three. This is the second best one that I've seen so far. Uh, the second one was weird with the whole goat people and whatnot, even though the song was catchy that everybody seems to to remember. Uh, but yeah, enjoyable. So, you know, we'll see going forward. I haven't given up on this show. I'm confused, but not to the point where I wouldn't watch it. But anyways, let me know what your thoughts were about this episode. And like always, that's a wrap.